Hi everyone, my name is PTJ KFC Richie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today our discussion on ordinary differential equations will be the continuation of first order ordinary differential equations and our attention will be based on exact differential equations. You know, we said that first order ordinary differential equations are separable or non-separable. We look at how to solve the separable one. We say if they are non-separable so far, we look at the homogeneous and non-homogeneous. Even with the non-homogeneous, there are two cases. Case one, case two. We we'll also learn how to solve linear first order ordinary differential equations. We we'll also learn how to solve Bernoulli differential equations. All these videos are on YouTube. So please search for TTJ Kepsi Richie on YouTube and watch all these videos so that you get the knowledge. When differential equations are non-separable, they can also be exact or non-exact. Today, before the video will end, I will give you some tips that will enable you to solve exact and non-exact differential equations. How to determine if a first order ordinary differential equation is exact or non-exact. Then, we will solve problems covering the exact differential equations. This will be a very interesting engagement, so I indulge you to watch the video to the end. So before we can solve exact and non-exact differential equations, the thing that you need most is that you should be able to know how to do partial differentiation as well as direct integration. Very, very necessary. So we'll revise our knowledge on the how to do partial differentiation and how to do direct integration so that our solution to exact and non-exact differential equation will be very easy. Now, when we have a function u dependent on x and y, and we are asked to find a partial differentiation of u with respect to one of these variables, the, either va the other variable will be kept constant. That's a trick. So if you are asked to do a partial differentiation of with respect to x, y will be kept constant. Then partial differentiation with respect to y, x will be kept constant. So now let's do partial differentiation with respect to x. That's u squared x. Please, we can write this as del u over del x. Okay, they are the same. So now to differentiate this, see, this becomes linear. So the differentiation of a linear is just the coefficient of the variable. So the coefficient of x here is 2y. So when we differentiate that, the answer is just 2y. Now there is no y there. So we differentiate this with respect to x. That will be 18x. Remember, we'll draw to multiply the 9. That's partial differentiation with respect to x. This is the same as that. So we can say this. Now let's do partial differentiation with respect to y. This can be written as del u over del y. So, when we are doing partial differentiation with respect to y, x will be kept constant. So, I want to differentiate this. I want to differentiate this with respect to x. The coefficient of the, with respect to y, the coefficient of the y here is 2x. So, I want to differentiate it will be the 2x. Then, the differentiation of this, because there is no y there, the whole of that is constant. So we differentiate a constant is zero. So partial differentiation of this with respect to y is nothing but 2x. So they are the same. It's nothing but 2x. I hope you get a partial differentiation. The next thing I'll do is to do direct integration for you to get the necessary tips before we start solving. So since we learned the partial differentiation, now let's do direct integration. So anytime we are doing direct integration to that's with a function is dependent on two variables, x and y. And we are doing direct integration with respect to x. y will be kept constant. And remember, anytime we do integration, we add the constant of integration. That constant of integration will be an arbitrary constant of the other variable which we are not integrating with respect to. So like this one, we are integrating with respect to x because of the dx here. The constant of integration will be an arbitrary constant of y, not s. So now, y will be kept constant. So let's see how we we'll integrate this. Remember, the integration rule. We add 1 and divide the function by that. So 
a square y over 2 minus there is the whole x that so 9 x 3 over 3 then plus our constant of integration that constant will be an arbitrary constant of y i hope you get that because we are integrating with respect to x so in our share this will be x square y minus 3s cube plus h of y a constant of y i hope you get that now let's integrate it with respect to x uh, y this time around so 2sy minus 9 square dy so we are going to integrate with respect to y so x will be kept constant so remember integration rule we add one so 2sy exponent 2 there is one there already plus one that will be 2 over 2 minus now the whole of this is constant remember the integration of a constant we just attach the variable that we we are integrating with respect to it. So this will be 9x squared y. Then plus an arbitrary constant of x. I hope you get that. So in our shape, this will be xy squared minus 9x squared y plus an arbitrary constant of x. That's how to do direct integration. I hope, I hope you get that. I hope you get that. The next thing is that we will learn how to determine if a differential equation is exact or non-exact. So, the next thing is that we will learn how to determine whether a differential equation is exact or non-exact. So, if we have a differential equation like this, and we want to determine whether it is exact, you see, the, the function here, depending on x and y, is having a dx attached to it. Find a partial differentiation of that function, okay, with respect to y. A partial differentiation of this function with respect to y. If that is equal to the partial differentiation of the function n here with respect to x, check dy here, so with respect to x, the partial differentiation with respect to y, if with respect to x, if they are equal, then we say that. This differential equation is exact. It's an exact differential equation. So we can rewrite this thing as del. That is a partial differentiation of m with respect to y. We can write it like this. So the del is the same as the m sub squared to y. And it is equal to the partial differentiation of the n, the function n, okay, with respect to what x. If they are equal, then we say they are. It's exact. They are the same. It's the same. Now, if they are not equal, thus the partial differentiation of m with respect to y, okay, is not equal to the partial differentiation of n with respect to the x. If it is not equal, we say it's non-exact. Is non exact, so we can rewrite this thing to in this form. As far as they are not equal, it's non exact. If they are equal, it's exact. So we take some differential equations and find out whether it is exact or non exact. Then we take it from there. So the first example is they determine whether or not the differential equation below is exact or non exact. So what do we do? Our m of x y will be equal to this that's 2 x y squared plus 4 okay and our n of x y okay will be equal to this 2 x squared y minus 6 okay so we find the ds is attached so we find the partial differentiation of n with respect to y this will be so remember when we have been partial differentiation with respect to a variable the other variable will be kept constant so our x here will be kept constant so we differentiate this that will get 4xy when we differentiate a constant is 0 now let's find a partial differentiation of n with respect to x so what y will be kept constant when we differentiate this we'll drop we'll get 4xy 
the differentiation of a constant is zero. So we can see that the partial differentiation of m with respect to y, okay, is equal to the partial differentiation of m with respect to x, all equal to 4xy. As far as they are equal, we say that this differential equation is exact, exact differential equations. Is exact. I hope you get that. I hope you get that. Just do partial differentiation. Do your partial differentiation very well. When you do it, they are equal. It's exact. Now we'll take another one and see if it is exact or non exact. So let's look at the second one. We'll determine whether this differential equation is exact or non exact. So easy. Just let the m to be equal to this side. That's 2xy minus sine x. Okay, and the n of x y should be equal to x square minus cos y. Then we find partial differentiation of m with respect to y. So x will be kept constant. So one differentiate this, it will be 2x. The differentiation of this is zero because it's constant. Now we differentiate it with respect to x, with respect to x. So y will be kept constant. So this will be 2x then this is constant so the differentiation will be zero so we can see that the partial differentiation with respect to m and uh, the partial differentiation of m with respect to y is equal to the partial differentiation of m with respect to x all equal to 2x so we say this differential equation is exact i hope i hope you get that i hope you get that. see if you are able to determine whether it is exact or non exact, that will enable you to solve the equation very well. So, we'll solve one more example so that you'll be abreast with the concept. Okay, so let's see the third one. We'll determine whether this is exact or non exact. So, we'll let the m, depending on x and y, be equal to the 3e exponent xy plus x. Okay? And our n depending on x and y we go to e exponent x what do we do we find the partial differentiation of m with respect to y okay please we can rewrite this in another form so i want to use that for writer so we'll do partial differentiation of m with respect to y is the same thing so the x will be kept constant so this is constant the whole of this is also constant. So remember how differentiate in linear, it will just be the coefficient of this variable y. So that will be 3e e exponent x. Now we differentiate this to with respect to x now. So we said del n bracket xy over del x del x. Now remember the differentiation of exponential functions. We just differentiate the exponent and use it to multiply the function again. So when you differentiate x, we get 1. 1 times this will be same as that. So we can see that the partial differentiation of m, okay, with respect to y is not equal to the partial differentiation of m with respect to x. So we say that this differential equation is non exact it's non exact i hope you get that i hope you get that today before the video end our attention will be based on how to find solution to the exact ones so come with me so now after you are able to determine that your differential equation is exact how do you solve that that's what our attention will be based on today you introduce a function that it is the solution to the general solution to the differential equation. Okay, and that function will be the integral of m. Okay, the integral of this, or the integral of this, any of them. Please always take the easiest one. Okay, take the easiest one. So now when you integrate this, remember our constant of integration will be a, an arbitrary constant of y. Please remember that. Now, 
this is the function after we integrate this remember it will be direct integrating with respect to x plus an arbitrary constant of y equals it with respect to x now what do you do after you differentiate you now after you integrate this you will now differentiate this function when you differentiate a function you equate it to the other side of the differential equation which you did not integrate so you see that we are integrating with respect to x now after we integrate we differentiate the function and equate it to the differentiation with respect to y here. if someone takes integration with respect to y after you integrate this now you will now differentiate the result and equate it to this i, I hope you get that i hope you get that so we can say after we integrate we find the, the differentiation okay the differentiation will be with respect to y so we differentiate the whole of this function okay so we can say this dx so let me say i'm differentiating this function plus the differentiation of y what next so after you do this you equate the differentiation here to this side if you equate you come and make the h prime the differential of y here the subject okay you make it the side so let's let's make it the subject using this an arbitrary form so we can say that h prime of y okay will be equal to f okay now let's equate first let's equate this to this before we we try to 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 make the h prime the subject so after we differentiate we equate this to this side so we can say that our the integral of okay m of x y dx okay uh the differential of that plus the differential of y okay the differential of the arbitrary constant of y will be equal to this n of x y i hope you get that now you make the y prime the subject you make it the subject so we have so we make our h prime the subject so we can say our h prime of y is equal to n of x y minus the differential okay the integral of this differential uh, m of x y ds okay what next we need we need h of y to substitute here to substitute here so what do you do you integrate both sides again after you integrate both sides you get your h of y then you substitute into the equation it's a very interesting thing this thing looks so abstract it's very simple so i'll take a sample question so that i will take you through this so solve our first example okay? solve the differential equation this so if you see this will not be separable you are aware of that this will be non-separable is it homogeneous does it look like homogeneous no does it look that the non-homogeneous no so does it look like linear first order you see that it doesn't necessarily look like that does it look like the Bernoulli you see no so it's either be exact or non-exact so we determine that so our m of x y will be equal to two x y minus nine x squared. Okay, then n of x y okay will be equal to two y plus x squared plus y. Now we find a partial differentiation with respect to y here. Why do we get? So our x will be kept constant. So when we differentiate this, we get two x. Remember that the differentiation of this will be zero. Because it's constant. Now we find a partial differentiation with respect to x for the n. So why would we kept constant? The whole of this will be zero. So this will be 2x. Then constant here is zero. So we can see that the partial differentiation of m with respect to x, uh, y, is equal to the partial differentiation of n with respect to x. All equal to 2x. So this differential equation 
is exact. It's exact. I hope you get that. I hope you get that. Now, if it is exact, how do you do that? So now we are able to determine that it is exact. So how do you solve that? We we'll assume that the solution, the general solution to this, will be the integral of one of these sides. So I'm taking this. The next one I will take this too, so that you are blessed with it. So it will be equal to the integral of 2xy minus 9x squared dx. So direct integration with respect to x, y will be kept constant. So what we have? We we'll remember the integration we have. We we'll add one and divide. So 2x squared y over 2 minus 9x squared over 3, then plus an arbitrary constant of y because we are integrating with respect to x. So what do we have? We have x squared y minus 3x squared plus an arbitrary constant of y. So that will be our, our port, our general solution to this differential equation. But we need the arbitrary constant of y. So what do we do? We differentiate this again. So let's differentiate. So our f prime of x y will be equal to. Remember the differentiation is with respect to y. So x will be kept constant. So one differentiation you get x squared. The whole of this will be zero because there is no y there. The whole of that will be zero plus the differential of this. Now after you differentiate, you equate this to the other side. So now, after we differentiate, we equate this to this side. So we say that our x squared plus that h prime of y will be equal to 2y plus x squared plus 1. Look at this. We equate it that. See, after you equate, all values of x, all values of x will vanish. If it doesn't, then that means there is a problem with your solution. So you check it out. And if you start with this rather, after you reach here, all values of y will not be there again. So let's see if some values of x will, will, will remain again after we make our h prime the same. So our h prime will be equal to 2y plus x squared. Okay, so minus x squared plus 1. So our h prime of y we we'll equal to 2y. See, this will be 0. You see that there is no any value of x there again. How do we get h of y? When we integrate the differential of a function, we we'll get a function. We we'll say we we'll find the integration of both sides. We we'll equal to the integral of 2y plus 1 dy. So this will just be nothing but y, uh, h of y, and to be equal to how do we integrate this? Remember, this will be y squared plus y, then plus our constant of integration. So this is our h of y. Remember the function, okay? The solution to this, we said it should be this. Look at it, this one. So let's write that. That is x squared y minus 3x squared plus h of y. So we just replace our, this is our h of y. So the general solution to that differential equation will just be x squared y minus 3 x squared plus in place we write y squared plus y plus c. So this becomes our general solution to this differential equation. So if any other boundary conditions are given to us, we just have to, to find a particular solution. I hope you get that. I'll solve one more question. This time around, I will integrate this side. So that you get a concept. So let's solve the second question on exact differential equation. But however, we need to determine whether it is exact or non-exact before we start solving. So it's not yet in a general form. So we bring this one here. So we have 2xy minus sine x dx. So we subtract minus. We bring this one here. Cos y minus x squared dy equal to zero. So we can distribute this negative across so that we get positive here. So we have 2xy minus sine x, okay? 
dx. So we turn this to plus so that we distribute. So we have s squared. This will be positive, this will be negative minus cos y dy and it will be equal to 7. So now I will let the solution to this differential equation be equal to the integral of that. First I did this, so let me do this again so that you get a concept. Now we say the general solution to this differential equation should be equal to the integral of s squared minus cos y dy. So what happened? We are going to integrate this with respect to y. Direct integration with respect to y. So our x will be kept constant. So, so the solution f of x, y, okay, will be equal to now. When we integrate the constant, we just attach the variable to it. This will be constant. So we have x squared y, okay. Then the integration of cos is sine. So sine y. Then plus, because we are integrating with respect to y, we we'll add an arbitrary constant of x. I hope, I hope you get that. What's the next thing? We differentiate this with respect to x. So what we do, we differentiate this. So f prime of x, y will be equal to, y will be kept constant. So we have 2 x, y, the whole of this, because there is no x, there will be 0. Then plus. A, cons, uh, a differential of the arbitrary constant of the whole of the x. Now what next? You equate this to this side. After you equate, everything concerning y must not be there. Immediately it is there, then there is a problem with your solution. So now let's equate and see what happens. So we can say that this should be equal to this side. This. So let's equate. So we said our uh, 2xy plus h prime of x should be equal to 2xy minus sine x. So we will make h prime of x as obvious. So h prime of x will be equal to 2xy minus 2xy. So we send this one there minus our sine x. So I said after you equate and you make h prime a side, everything concerning y must not be there. If it is there, then there is a problem with your solution. So you can see that everything concerning y, this will be zero. So you can say h prime of x will be equal to negative sine x. What do we do? We integrate both sides. So we integrate h prime of x equal to the integral of negative sine x dx. We can bring the negative out. So we have h prime of x is equal to negative the integral of sine x dx. So when we integrate this, it will be the function and should be equal to. When we integrate sine x, we will get negative cos x. So we have negative cos x plus our constant of integration. So negative cos s plus our constant of. So we distribute the negative. Our arbitrary constant of s will be equal to cos x plus c. So we just substitute this into our general solution this. In place of h of x, we'll put cos x plus c. So we say that our general solution f of x, y will be equal to x square y minus sine y then plus cos x plus c plus c I hope, I hope you get that if, if you use this from the beginning that's from the beginning you integrate this with respect to the you get you, you get the same answer as someone who started with this process I, I hope you understand please play over the video and remember to subscribe to my youtube channel and hit the notification bell so that if I share a video, you'll be the first to receive it. Until we meet again on ordinary differential equation. Bye bye.